I want to welcome Jill to the High Performance Stats Summit. She's going to talk about five ways to generate more revenue on a consistent basis for your business. We're honored to have her on this platform. So I am Jill Zambon. If you were here yesterday, then you know that I run Jill Zambon Marketing and Consulting. I'm also a Navy veteran. So I served five years in the U.S. Navy CBs as an engineer. I got out of the Navy in 2011 and went straight into IT consulting. Um, Funny story, I never wanted to get into IT. When I was in college, I avoided IT, but I got sucked in as soon as I got out of the military and I've been in IT to some capacity since 2011. In 2013, I went into healthcare and I was there until the last couple of years when I left the corporate world to pursue my own businesses. And let's see, I have a couple pictures. Let me go to the pictures and then we'll come back to the summary. Where are they? Okay, so I didn't show any pictures yesterday, but this is my daughter, Jade, and then our dog, Bailey. So I actually was born and raised in Vermont. And I am a New England girl through and through. Um, We moved to Florida in the middle of COVID just to get her back into school. And if you heard my my story yesterday, really, it came down to the fact that when COVID hit, I was working for a pharmaceutical company that did all the preclinical trials for the COVID vaccine. And so while some employers could be a little lax on on their staff, we did not have that opportunity. And so... I really focused on my work and kind of let my daughter's education go by the wayside. And so when we moved to Florida, she was way behind. And that was definitely my wake up call to say, you know, I was in a position that work was taking priority over my daughter. And I think I had known that, but COVID just really brought that to light a lot more than it had ever been. So let me go back and just quickly recap what we chatted about yesterday in case you missed it or in case you forgot about it overnight. That's okay. So summary from yesterday. Yesterday, I gave you five strategies to stabilize your business in an unstable economy. So I think you know that our economy is not the best right now, but we've had difficulties in the past. And I mentioned a few examples yesterday So some inventions during the Great Depression were sliced bread. That was that that idea came up during the Great Depression. Toll House cookies, nylon bristle toothbrushes, um, the first car radio that was actually invented during the Great Depression. So I'm always an opportunistic thinker. And so when I think about, yes, the economy isn't in the best shape it's ever been. But there are definitely good things that come out of that. And I think people tend to innovate when, you know, they're not so busy and their minds aren't so busy. So it's both a curse and a blessing, I think, that we had locked down for so long. But let's hop into this. So one of the ways to stabilize your business is to identify new opportunities. So anytime there's a new problem like COVID, there is new opportunities and not even directly related to COVID, but I gave some examples yesterday about parents wanting to homeschool their kids more. So with COVID, we all had to homeschool our kids for quite some time. And a lot of parents decided, hey, this is actually better because it gives us more flexibility in our lifestyle. And a lot of people are taking that route. So there were some indirect opportunities that came from COVID. And I want to urge you, if you didn't join us yesterday to go back and watch the recording so you can learn more about those opportunities and some ideas that I suggested. So number two, forming partnerships. And I know a lot of speakers yesterday touched on this and how building partnerships and relationships is so important to growing your business and scaling it a lot quicker. Strategy number three was having a back out plan. So luckily, if you're a multi-passionate entrepreneur like myself and you have a lot of different interests, Some people would say, just focus on one thing. But when the economy is in rough shape, it's actually a really good time to have multi-passionate ideas because you can use your knowledge from a different industry to help the specific business that may not be performing as well. Strategy number four that we talked about was purchasing an established business. So 
we know a lot of people left the workforce during COVID, right? They called it the great resignation. And if you're one of those people, or if you know someone that is, and they haven't found kind of their calling yet, something they could look into is purchase an established business. This way, they're not starting from ground zero. You can actually start, if you vet the business well, you can start, you know, hit the ground running and have a business that's already ready to go. And then lastly is get good at marketing. And this is really where myself and my team come in. Marketing for small businesses can be a really heavy burden. And I know this because I started my own small business two years ago. It's an e-commerce online women's apparel brand. And it is absolutely, it's just, it's a lot to try to run your business and do all the marketing and everything behind the scenes. And so I want to go into some of the specifics today about tools I use to make my life a bit easier from a marketing perspective. So by the end of today's presentation, I want you to be able to understand the different components of digital market marketing. We'll take a review of just a general plan that you can use and apply to your own business. And then lastly, I'll show you some tools that you can use to improve your marketing. All right, so you can see there are a lot of different pieces to digital marketing. I do not typically start with paid ads with my clients because if what you're already doing is not working, if it's not converting, if you're not getting the traffic that you need to get the conversions, it doesn't make any sense to use paid ads to drive traffic to that platform because it's not working. So you're just going to be wasting money, essentially, driving more people to a system that's not working. So I typically like to start with search engine optimization. And it sounds like a big word, but really all it means is when you go to Google or you go to one of the search engines and you look for a specific thing, where do you rank in that list? And so search engine optimization just helps you rank higher. Ideally, the goal is being first, right? You want to be first on that search list. Um, that does take some time. And I tell my clients, let's give it at least six months to try to get that improved. And I like to use a certain tool that I'm going to show you where we actually do competitor analysis and see what keywords they're using and how we can redirect that traffic to your website instead of theirs. So the next one is social media. Obviously, social media is absolutely huge and there's more and more platforms, right? Which means more and more need for strategy, for brand alignment, for reaching certain target demographics. And my suggestion is to focus on one or two platforms at first and get really good at them. Figure out where your people are hanging out, right? So if your demographic is an older age, let's say like 50s and up or whatever, then they're probably not going to be on TikTok. So where are they hanging out? Depending on their interest, that'll help you determine which social media platform you should focus on at first. You can also reuse content. So let's say you create a YouTube video where you're providing education for people. You can just chunk that out into smaller 30 second videos and use that for social media and for your email campaigns so that you're not constantly having to make new content. So alleviating some of that burden from yourself because as a small business owner, you already have so much on your plate. Content marketing is everything that you're putting out online for people to find your business. It's your brand, it's your social media, it's everything that you're doing to drive traffic and get interest in your business. Email marketing is really just keeping in touch with your audience, right? So you get people to subscribe, you consistently warm them up through those email campaigns, get them to come buy your product. And I think an important step in email marketing is ask people to buy. So yes, you want to warm them up. Yes, you want them to know about you, but don't forget the critical step of asking them to actually buy and giving them a reason or a little urgency in buying from you. PR, which is public relations, this is making sure that you're out in the public. So getting published in your local papers is a great way, finding papers, throughout the U.S. that maybe are interested in a story about you, that's a great way. Get on podcasts. You can be a guest speaker. You don't have to start your own podcast, but 
that'll help you get in front of a larger audience much quicker than growing your audience from the ground up. Sales funnels, so these are becoming really popular because creating a website is so easy. And especially for e-commerce brands, there are just so many competitors and so many different websites that having a sales funnel that's specific to each customer journey helps you to target what you want to sell and to whom. So you can set up specific targeted sales funnel depending on people's interest. And I'll show you later on in the presentation, how do you know what they're interested in? There's actually data that will tell you what they're interested in. So I get this question all the time from my small business owners. They're like, there is so much to do with marketing. Where the heck do I even start? And so my recommendation is you start over here on the left. Start with your current customers. They are the cheapest ones to get to buy your product because they already know about you and they've already purchased from you. So something I personally like to do is a loyalty program. So once someone purchases the first time, then when I send them the product, I say, oh, by the way, you know, if you order within a week, you'll get a discount on your next order. And then again, and I keep doing that and people tend to continue to buy. Another thing you can do is, take your current customers and do a special sale. So I did this for Valentine's Day. Anyone that had purchased from me last year, I did a handwritten card <laughs> and I mailed it to them with a discount code and taking the time to do a handwritten card sets you apart. So yes, I'm talking about digital marketing, but the conversion rate for that handwritten card was over 33%. And so just taking that extra time to really show your customers that you care and doing that extra step to stand apart is so important. So think outside the box. It doesn't just have to be digital. How else can you touch your customers and show them that you actually care about them? Email marketing, I like to use to just stay in touch. And I don't always push a sale in my email marketing. Some of it is really fun, and I'll give you an example later on where you can actually use a blog for your email marketing so that you're not having to write stuff all the time. Social media engagement. So not just posting on social media, right? And I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to make this real. I'll put it to some trending music, and then I'm just going to make a ton of money overnight. And it, it doesn't work that way. So you actually need to go out and engage with your followers. And even if you have a small following, don't discount that. Go out and look at them. Learn about your audience and learn who they are as a person. So me personally, I'll spend 15 to 30 minutes a day going through my followers. I go to their page. I like, I comment. And you start to learn, even though I've never met face to face, I know people, I can message them. Hey, how was your vacation? Like you start to meet these people and really know them. And then they're way more likely to buy from you. Yesterday, I talked about affiliate and referral programs. So this affiliate program can work on both ends. So you can find affiliates for your brand, but you can also be an affiliate for different brands. So for example, Jason mentioned a CRM that he likes to use. If you want to recommend a CRM system to people, you can ask for an affiliate program so that you get whatever, 10 or 20% kickback from the CRM company. So you're getting that passive income as you invite people to that platform. Referral programs are great for service-based um, people. So if you're a coach, something like that, you can ask your prior clients for referrals and give them a couple hundred dollars, right? Depending on how much your, your program costs to bring you clients. And like I said, it's much cheaper and easier to use your current customer network to get new business than it is to go out and kind of cold reach and try to reach all new clients. So once you get through that phase, once you feel like you've really tapped into your current customers, then you can move to your next phase. And this is where you expand your reach. This is where having a solid social media strategy is super important. So go through something I like to do with my clients is I go through your Instagram and your Facebook and I clean it up, right? And Pinterest, if you're on Pinterest, does it have a cohesive view and is it in alignment with where your brand is currently? 
it's super natural for your brand to evolve over time and the image to evolve over time. You just want to make sure you go back through your social media and clean up anything that doesn't align or doesn't fit with you anymore. And so that's a service that we also offer. You also want to get into SEO optimization and really focus on it when you're trying to reach new clientele. So making sure that you're using the right keywords, redirecting traffic from your competitors, those are important steps to getting out in front of new people. And then I mentioned PR, so public relations, getting some articles written about you in local papers, maybe state papers, even national joining those podcasts, make sure that you ask the podcast, who is your target demographic? Because you don't want to spend a bunch of time if it's not the right demographic. But I will say there's sometimes a lag in this. So I was on a PR probably on a podcast about eight months ago. And I was like, oh man, nobody, it's not getting any traffic. What's happening? And then I finally got a sale from that this week. So it does work. It just might be a little bit of a lag before you're you're seeing that traffic from your podcast. And then the last phase is to start to scale and grow. So once those other phases, those first two phases are really good, really solidified, you've got a nice process in place, everything's running smoothly, then it's finally time to start scaling and growing. So this is where the paid ads come in. So once you know your funnels are converting, your website's converting, your social media is converting, then you can start running paid ads and boosting that traffic up so that you're getting more conversions. Until that point, I would not do paid ads, especially because it just gets lost. Go, you know, if you go on Instagram and Facebook, how many ads do you see all the time where you just kind of start to blur it all out, right? And so you don't want to be part of that noise. You want to wait until you have a solid product that's converting, then you can focus on paid ads. And then you can also make your sales funnels more robust. So let's say you are a coach, you're starting to grow even exponentially larger. You have a high dollar value item. Maybe someone says, oh no, I can't afford that one. So you kick them back to a lower dollar value. So you're keeping their their dollars, right? You're making the sale. You're just being able to either downsell them or sometimes upsell, right? So let's say you successfully coach a client and they've done testimonials for you. You know that they're really happy with what you've provided to them. You can upsell, right? You can say, oh, let's keep you on on a subscription monthly basis and make that a long-term relationship with that person. All right, so email campaigns. Here are a couple tools that I have used. Um, What you want when you're looking for an email campaign tool is something that tracks open rate, conversion rate, which is will show as a click-through rate. It'll show dollar values. So if that person clicks through your email and then ends up purchasing, a good system will show you how much money they spent and it'll show you who unsubscribes. So I've used Klaviyo. I know a lot of people like MailerLite and MailChimp. It's just a matter of what you need and what other systems you have. But you don't want to just send it from your email inbox because then you don't know who's opening, who's actually reading it. So having that data is really important in understanding what people are interested in as well. You can use blogs, like I said, and email campaigns in tandem. So one one tactic I've recently implemented is I write a blog. So let's say seven ways to feel more confident, right? In my email campaign, I only list the first three ways. And so then there's a link at the bottom of my email that brings them back to my website. So what I'm doing is I'm intentionally driving traffic to my website, to that specific blog, but on the blog, I have a link to my products so that it flows through the blog. So they don't really know it's not like a hard sell, but they can click over to my products. And that way I'm having multiple points where I can sell them something and they don't even know it. They think they're just reading about how to feel more confident, right? And so that's something I love to do because it saves time and it has been extremely effective. Social media. 
So this can be a time suck if you let it. And I personally, I love scheduler tools because I don't want to spend all day on social media, manually publishing. Obviously with Instagram reels, Instagram's a little bit finicky with posting reels. So you, you may have to do that manually, but a couple of tools you can look at are Canva and then Facebook actually launched a tool you can publish to both Facebook and Instagram. Something to keep in mind is that an external source to like a later.com there's conflicting information about how that affects the algorithm. And so if you can use something like Facebook Creator Studio that's built right within the platform, there's information in that that may help the algorithm and you may be seen a lot better if you do that. Another strategy you can do is batch your content so that you're not having to create content all the time and you can reuse it. You can take different clips of video and plug and play in different ways and just continue to reuse it. So again, you're not making new content all the time. But I think even more important than the content is spending time just a little bit on social media every day. So I say 15 minutes, set your timer, do five minutes to respond to comments from the previous day, five minutes looking at trends and saving them so you have some inspiration for your next social media content strategy. And then make sure you spend five minutes engaging with your followers. So go through your follower list, go out, like, comment, treat them like a person because there's a person on the other side of that phone, right? Go out and say exactly what you would if it was a friend or family member. Above all else, consistency is key. We know the algorithms are meant to keep you hooked, right? You're going to do better. You're going to perform better if you're consistently on there at least daily, but like I said, you don't have to spend a ton of time on there. Affiliate and referral programs, we've talked about this a couple times already. Obviously, it's, it's pretty easy to set up an affiliate program at this point. Your website, whatever you're using, likely has some kind of a plugin or an add-on that you can just put on your website. And then it's just a matter of marketing, getting the word out there, and figuring out what you want to offer as part of your affiliate program. SEO optimization. So this is where I want to get into the nitty gritty of some of my favorite tools. So I like to use Ubersuggest, Google Keyword Search, and Google Trends. And those systems will show you what are people searching for, what is trending, and what are my competitors using. And something to remember about SEO, you can't just set it and forget it. You constantly have to update your info. You have to continuously optimize it to beat out your competitors. And when you look for keywords, and I'll show this in an example, you want to find words that are low competition, but high search volume. And something to remember that not a lot of people know is SEO isn't just for your website. You can use it in your captions on social media, put it in your LinkedIn profile. So there's the description that's right under your name in LinkedIn. Update that to the services and products that you offer. Like, what is the value you're offering? So I had a guy I met with last week. Um, his thing said something about Modern Woodman of America. If you don't know what Modern Woodman is, you're not going to know what he does. So we updated his description to talk about financial planning, retirement planning, all of the other services that he offers. So when people go to search now, they can find him much easier. You can also put tags on your photos. So name the photo based on the keyword that you want to drive the traffic and also use the description for the photo to optimize your keywords. And of course, your product or service description should definitely have the keywords in it. So this is a screenshot from Ubersuggest. You can actually use this for free. There is a free version you can use. So what you do come in and add your website. It'll bring you to this dashboard that'll show you what, how are you ranking, right? What issues do you have? And it'll walk you through who are your competitors and what keywords are they using that you could, that you could use. Once you get in this platform, it'll start sending you automated emails that say, hey, I have some suggestions for keywords that you could rank for really easily. And that helps you to more quickly rank for these keywords that have high opportunities. So you're not guessing. 
So my suggestion would be, if you're not on this tool yet, go to Uber Suggest. This is how it's spelled right there. Set up a, just the free version for yourself. You don't even need the paid version. Have it run the keyword analysis for you. It'll also do a site audit. So what that does is it checks that your navigation is working on your website. It checks that nothing's broken, everything's loaded okay, all of that fun stuff. And you can make sure your website is optimized and running at a good you know, pace. Okay. So earlier I talked about figuring out what your people's interests are. And the reason this is important is because this will help drive ideas for your blogs and your social media strategy. And if you haven't installed Google Analytics on the back end of your website, it's pretty easy. You just go in, copy some code, and then put it on your website. And what this does is it captures information about everyone that comes to your site. So you can see over here, it's demographics. So you can get, you know, gender, age, where are they located, all of that fun stuff. And it gets right down to what are their specific interests. So for me, I own an e-commerce brand, which is women's fashion. But my target audience, I had a feeling their main focus isn't fashion, right? They're busy professional women. They want to look good, but that's not their main focus. And this data confirmed that, right? So my people that are interested in my clothing, there's other things that they like. They like home decor. They do like apparel right? Um, but a lot of what they're interested in is home and home furnishings, how to decorate their like lifestyle. They like to get out. They like to have coffee, right? They're very outgoing and social. And so you can use this information to paint a more accurate avatar, customer avatar for the people that will buy your product or service. So that is the importance of Google Analytics is you can use this to better cater and market to your audience. All right, yesterday I gave a little overview for our what's called the strategic blueprint review. So what we do is we go out on certain businesses, websites, social media, and we see, okay, what's performing well on the website? How are you doing against your competitors? What about your social media? And this isn't necessarily how many followers do you have, but how engaged are they? How much do they actually respond to the content that you're putting out there? And how is that social media presence converting for you? Are you getting any conversions from social media or do you need to consider other platforms? We also do competitor research. So I had a young lady last week who she thought her competitor was Noom. And we dug a little bit into that. And in fact, her competitor is not Noom. So um, we had to reevaluate where she really wants to go with her business and do brand new competitor research for her to get a more accurate picture of what her keywords and her brand strategy should be focused on. From this review, I come back and I provide recommendations for where you're different from your competitors. So I have a couple estheticians that I work for. They both offer similar services, but they each have very unique services that they offer that other estheticians aren't offering. And so we've been able to highlight their specific offerings that are their differentiation basically in the marketplace. And so you don't know that until you take the time to go out and research your competitors. I think a lot of people just say, oh, everyone's you know an esthetician and we all offer the same things, but it's not true. So in your business, you might be feeling like, oh, you know, everyone does whatever, XYZ plumbing or everyone does handyman work, for examples. But when you go out and look at your competitors, it might not be true. There's something that makes you different than your competitors. It's just finding that gem and highlighting that as part of your offerings and making sure that you're maximizing on that whatever makes you different. 
So once we do that whole review, I come back with a strategic blueprint and it is very detailed as to how do you go from where you are now to where you want to be. So I met with a guy last week who owns a shutter manufacturing business and they also install shutters. Obviously with COVID, we've had sourcing issues. And so where he's sourcing his shutters from right now there's just a ton of delays. And so he's losing customers because of that. He's starting to get bad reviews. It's just not working out well for him. Where he's from in Guatemala, they actually make very high quality shutters with a special kind of wood that if he could build up a manufacturing plant over there, he could cut costs actually, or leave costs where they are and have a higher profit margin. And so that's where he's trying to go. He cannot do that, though, until he really ramps up his business due to obviously shipping from Guatemala to here is going to be expensive if it's only like a quarter or a half box, mm -hmm. right, like a shipping box. And so what we're working on with him is what are some of the big box stores that he might want to get into? So we're talking about approaching Lowe's or a Home Depot or something like that to get his shutters in there and offering installment services as well, and really being a partner for one of those bigger chain stores. So he scales much quicker and he can offload and put that manufacturing offshore a lot quicker than he would by just trying to buy, you know, one customer at a time trying to scale up. All right, I went through this yesterday. So at Jill Zambon Marketing and Consulting, these are the services that we offer. So number one is brand strategy. This is one of our best sellers. People will honestly buy this and be so happy with how it comes out that they feel competent enough that they can go and try to implement it. Some people will come back and say like, oh shoot, that was a lot. <laughs> it's a lot more work than I expected. Can you actually do this for you? And we will do that. So our brand strategy is that exact process I just walked you through. It's looking at your online presence. It's building a very customized strategy for your business, not just marketing, but how do you actually scale and grow? We do one-on-one -on -one in group training. I will have training coming up after Easter that is how to build a really solid sales funnel. And part of that will be actually doing the work, like when you walk out of that training, you'll have a sales funnel built from the lead magnet to videos because having videos in your email campaign is actually a really good way to stand out from your competitors. So if you're not doing that yet, you should do that. Even if it's a short video or a link out to YouTube, something to put a face behind the email. Thirdly is small project support. So let's say you have a launch coming up or you're implementing a new tool. We can help with that project support. We can backdate from your target date and make sure that you're really getting the buzz and the publicity you need to make sure you have a good, solid audience to launch to when you're ready. And then lastly is done for you marketing. So this means we can be your one-stop shop and I hire only the best people to be on my team. So I have a couple people that are very systematic and they're really focused on one thing that they're good at. And that is who I get to help with this done for you marketing. And if you don't have time, which I know a lot of small businesses, it's hard to juggle the marketing when you're trying to build your business. We take it all over. So we do all the social media content, all the engagement email automation and campaigns, SEO, website build, we can help plan events, whatever you need to grow your business and do the marketing, we can do that all for you. As I mentioned yesterday, we are offering our brand strategy at a deeply discounted rate. So this is typically a $1,500 service. As part of this summit, I'm offering that for $495 you need to either text me or email me by the end of the day today. If you want to snag that offer, just let me know you were in the summit and you would like to take advantage of that offer. And then we'll go ahead and schedule a consult call for you for free and get you started on that brand strategy session. Here is my contact info. So again, if you want to snag that brand strategy discount, please email me, jillzambonecoaching at gmail.com. And you can also shoot me a text 
And I know some of you have already found me on LinkedIn. That's great as well. You can shoot me a message over on LinkedIn. I do check it pretty frequently. Just make sure you mention you were on the summit and you would like to do the discounted brand strategy and we will get you all set up for that. And that is it. That's all I've got for today.